book of Genesis in chapter 49. Amen. Genesis 49, we have a prophecy concerning the tribe of Dan, which is the tribe we're going to be talking about today or tonight. The tribe of Dan had upon its banner a serpent. And tonight we're going to be talking about Scorpio and its three divisions. So in Genesis 49, 17, you'll see this prophecy concerning the tribe of Dan. Uh, let's do one thing. Let's back up to verse 16, and then we'll go into verse 17 and even 18, okay? Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent, say a serpent, by the way. So it's interesting that his banner carried upon it the the scorpion or the serpent upon it. So it says, Dan shall be a serpent, by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse hill so that his rider shall fall backward. This prophecy is be, has been interpreted as being the place from which the Antichrist would rise, be the tribe of Dan. So when you read this, Dan shall be a serpent, by the way. That's not a good thing to be called, to be called a serpent. And yet he is called a serpent by the way. An adder in the path that biteth the horse hill so that his rider shall fall backwards. Again, no doubt a prophecy concerning Antichrist possibly rising from the tribe of Dan. Verse 18, but it says, I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Amen. So the, this is a prophecy concerning those who refuse to take the mark of the beast. They're going to wait for the salvation of the Lord. They're not going to succumb to the serpent's bite in the way, etc., or give in to the Antichrist. Now, go with me to the book of Deuteronomy. And Moses, the previous in Genesis 49, was by Jacob. This prophecy in Deuteronomy chapter 33 is by Moses. And in verse 22, if you would look at that verse. And of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's whelp. He shall leap from Bashan. And, amen, that could be a reference to the judgment upon judgment day upon the nations because his name speaks of judgment. All right, y'all there? Okay, let's go to the prophet Ezekiel now. The prophet Ezekiel talks about a people. I would call the seed of the serpent. You've got two seeds in the world. You've got the seed of God, and you've got the seed of the serpent. Okay, the prophet Ezekiel. There in chapter 2, Ezekiel chapter 2, and in verse 6, we'll start reading there. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. This would be, of course, the seed of the serpent. Now, the prophet Ezekiel is prophesying to his own people, but God calls them scorpions. He said, Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. How many of y'all want to be like Ezekiel? You want to hear what God says to you. But he says to the, to the prophet, Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Don't be like a scorpion. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me and was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you right now. We ask you to have your way in this service that you would speak to us, God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for your redemption, your salvation, the power of your spirit. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, so upon the standard of the tribe of Dan would have been the serpent. Later on, it was changed, though, 
to the eagle, right? But originally it would have been a serpent. And it's paralleling this constellation that we're going to talk about tonight. Can you all see that? <clears throat> okay, he's going to bring that up for us so that you can see this constellation called Scorpio. All right, amen. Now, Dan's Hebrew letter would have been Zion. Okay, Zion. Say Zion. Go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119, this psalm, if you'll look there in verse 46, I believe it is, the seventh letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Zion, amen, verse, let's start, 49 is where it starts, okay, remember thou, remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope, this is my comfort in my affliction. For thy word hath quickened me, the proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. I remember thy judgments. Look at that. Dan means judgment. Okay? But this writer says, I remember thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Honor hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, and have kept thy law. This I had, because I kept thy precepts. This section, from verse 49 to 56, is the section known as the Zion uh, section, which is the, Hebrew, the seventh Hebrew letter. Now, that means to be enfolded. It needs to be surrounded. It has the thought in it of being the righteous man being surrounded by the wicked. It has in it the thought of a righteous man being surrounded by all kinds of affliction and trouble and attack and warfare. And, and so Dan, again, he's linked with the serpent, and his letter would be is Zion, which speaks of being surrounded. It also speaks of armor. Say armor. Okay, so we've got the armor of God around us. So David is listing some things that while he's surrounded by all of these troubles and these afflictions and this attack from the enemy, he is, he's got the armor of God in a sense. He's got the word of God. See, we've got the word, we've got the blood. And he talks about the name of God here, okay? The spirit of God is sustaining him. So we are, as a righteous people, surrounded by scorpions in a sense. We are surrounded by demonic powers that come against us and attack us. We are surrounded by people who are the seed of the serpent, just like Ezekiel was surrounded by them. But David said, I looked around and I saw all of this around me, surrounding me, trying to destroy me, but I had something very powerful. I had his word. I had his spirit. We have his blood now. See, David didn't have his blood then, but we have his blood now. So we've got a lot of powerful things. His spirit, his word, his blood, and his name. That is like an armor for us to give us the victory over all of these attacks from the seed of the serpent or the scorpion, etc. Amen. Now let me just go through this. Can y'all see this scorpion halfway? A little bit anyway? All right, let's talk about this constellation. The Egyptians see it as a serpent instead of a scorpion. Originally, then it would have been a serpent, a serpent in their eyes. And... <clears throat> It was at the feet of an enthroned ruler. Now that's interesting, isn't it? And it is literally seen bowing down to the one that's sitting on the throne. And we know who the one sitting on the throne is. And we're going to be talking about him in just a little bit. But the one sitting on the, upon the throne is who the serpent is bowing down to. Okay? And that's the way the Egyptians saw this constellation. But anyway, let's look at this Scorpio here and talk just a little bit about it. The Hebrew word for this constellation is A-K-R-A-B. It means the scorpion or the conflict. The root of that Hebrew word is war. Now, David said this about God. He makes my hands to war. We're in a fight. You are in a spiritual battle, but God makes your hands to war. To give you the victory over that serpent, etc. Amen? Now, Psalm 91. Let's go there. Back up just a little bit. Psalm 91. Praise God. Now, 
How many of y'all can sense the, the enemy's warfare? How many know what I'm talking about? That there is a real battle that is that's there against the righteous. Now, if you're not a part of the righteous seed, then you're a part of his. So you're not in war. You're not in battle if you already belong to him. But if you're in a fight tonight, that's a good sign that you're not in his camp anymore. In Psalm 91, look at this. Okay, this word here, when it talks about the scorpion, it talks about conflict. Psalm 91, 13. Thou shalt tread upon the lion, say the lion, and the adder, the young lion, and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. So this is a messianic psalm. It tells us that he's going to trample underfoot the dragon. He's also going to tread upon the lion and the adder. Do you believe that? Okay, go to Psalm 144 then. We'll see David making reference to the fact that he is going, that God's going to teach his hands to war. Psalm 144, verse 1. This constellation, this word here for this constellation is in this passage. It's the word war. Okay, it's verse 1. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war, and my fingers to fight. Amen. Also, this, the Arabic name for this constellation is the wounding. Say the wounding. It's the wounding of him that cometh. So when the Lord comes, the Messiah comes, this serpent is going to wound him. Now go to Genesis then. We'll see the prophecy about that. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, of course. Now I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his heel. So the serpent's going to bruise the heel of Messiah, but Messiah is going to crush the head of the serpent. Amen. So then this consolation also means in the Arabic, wounding him that cometh. All right, we know who that's going to be, right? Now, Genesis 49.10. Let's go over there. Give you some scripture here to look at. So you'll know who this consolation is all about. Forty nine ten. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Say his feet. Until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Do y'all believe that? Amen. Amen. It's beautiful. Also, the Coptic word for this constellation means the attack of the enemy. And it is also means to oppress. Okay, let's look at something else. Let's go to Revelation 9. In Revelation chapter 9, we have a prophecy concerning scorpions in the last days. And it is linked to this constellation. Now, which is very interesting to me because if I really want to know totally what the book of Revelation is speaking about, I also need to consider these constellations because these constellations will give us an interpretation. For example, Revelation chapter 6, we talked about the balances that it were in the third horse that went forth, the black horse with scales in its hands. And we're trying to figure out who that horse and who that rider was and who, you know, the balance is what they were representing. Well, that constellation Libra completely spoke about Jesus. It completely spoke about redemption. It didn't just, it wasn't just talking about a future famine that's coming in the land. The constellation gives us an interpretation concerning that black horse rider as being a picture of redemption. So a lot of times we look at the book of Revelation and we just look at it and interpret it. And I do believe in a literal prophetic interpretation. Okay, that famine is going to come. But I believe that there's also truth in the book of Revelation that has been missed. Primarily, it's a revelation of Jesus Christ and his redemption. So this black horse rider with scales in his hand then, as we showed you, with, you know, the barley and the wheat, etc. And it was, you know, spoken to that writer says uh, see thou hurt not the oil and the wine then the, to me that speaks of redemption and that's what the constellation Libra talked about 
So if I'm going to understand the book of Revelation, then I'm also going to need to understand this. If I don't, then all I'm looking for is the future cataclysmic prophetic interpretation, and I'll leave the picture of redemption and covenant completely out. Now what is really awesome is last week we preached about the, the scales. The next day in my mailbox, I got a prophecy magazine, and on the cover of that magazine... There was a black horse rider with a pair of scales in its hand high above the earth in the heavenlies. Now, for me, that's pretty exciting because I preach about, you know, this, and then the next day I get a prophecy magazine, and its focus is a black horse rider with scales in its hand. Now, to me, that's not coincidence. To me, that speaks that God is speaking to our, our church. He's leading us and He's guiding us. And he wants us to know where we are prophetically. Amen. But if you go to Revelation chapter 9, you're going to see again scorpions made reference to. Revelation chapter 9 verse 1, the fifth angel sounded. I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. He opened the bottomless pit. There arose smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pits. Are y'all reading along? And there came out of the smoke locusts, say locusts, upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. So this reference again is, it's in the heavens. It was given to us before we had the written word, before we ever had the book of Revelation. It was given to us. It's a prophecy. Amen? So these locusts are going forth, and what are they doing? They're like scorpions, and they're torturing men. Notice it says in verse 4, It was commanded to them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Now that's interesting to me, because most locusts, when they go forth, are going to do damage to a garden. You with me? Joel talks about locusts that hit the land of Israel in his day. They stripped the trees down. They barked the trees. They stripped the garden of God. Hello, garden of God. So when I get into the book of Revelation here, I see God telling them don't hurt any things of the garden. He tells them to afflict men. Because in my understanding of the Word of God, when I talk about the Garden of God, especially out of the Song of Solomon, I'm talking about mankind. You with me here? So they are told to <coughs> afflict these men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. They don't have protection. They don't have the armor of God. They are surrounded by these scorpions, and these scorpions are attacking them. But anybody that's got the seal of God in their foreheads, the enemy can't touch them. The enemy can't harm them. <clears throat> the enemy can't afflict them. But anybody that doesn't have that protection, then they are, are, are attacked by these scorpions. Now watch. The Bible says in verse 5, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. So they're going to be tormented for five months, but they can't die. The Bible said their torment was as the torment of a what? A scorpion. Amen. When, when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die. And death shall flee away from them. And the shape of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold and their faces were as the faces of men. They had the hair of a woman. Their teeth were the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates. Say breastplates. As it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. They had tails like unto scorpions. And they were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. All right. 
So the point here in the book of Revelation is these scorpions or these locust-like creatures come out of the abyss, the abyss, and they are attacking men, and they are striking men, but they're not hitting any vegetation because, in a sense, they're hitting men, okay? These men want to die, but they cannot find death. Amen? The only way they can find death is to find their judgment in Jesus. That's why anybody that is marked in their forehead cannot be harmed by these scorpions. You know why? Because they've already found death. They've already identified themselves with the crucified one. So in a spiritual sense, these people are looking for a way to die. Just like everybody that I know in this world, they're looking for a way to die. They want to be released from that old man. They want to be released from the control of, of the old Adam. The only way to do that is to recognize that Jesus became Dan for you. That he became your judgment. That he became death for you. That you died in him. And when he was judged, you were judged. That's the only way to die. They are seeking death and cannot find death. And the point is, is that when you find death, you go to the Calvary and you reckon yourself dead with Christ on that cross and you become born again, then what happens is he puts you back into the garden of God. Amen. God's good, isn't he? So if you look in Joel chapter 1. Joel chapter 1. Verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Bethuel. Hear ye, old men, and give ear all the inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it. Let your children tell their children, their children, another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the ca canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep and howl, all you drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come up, up upon my land strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof were made white. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meal offering, the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priest of the Lord ministers, the priest of the Lord, the priest, the Lord's ministers mourn. The field is wasted. So what we have, then we have a picture of the garden of God being wasted. Hello, garden of God. But in Joel chapter 2, then we see God through redemption and through the outpouring of His Spirit is going to restore the years of the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust, etc. hath eaten. So there's a lot of symbolism in prophecy. Amen. All right, let's go to Job 38. Job 38 and verse 23. Job 38, 23. He says this, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war. So again, this speaks to us of what? It speaks of a conflict. It speaks of a battle between the seed of the serpent and the seed of God. Now, in case you don't recognize and don't realize it, it's here today. It's, it's here tonight. It's here every service I have. It's not something that's out there. It's sitting right here. There's a, there's a battle going on for the souls of men, and there's a battle going on for your soul. Praise God. Amen? Say a battle. 
Also, names in this sign, there is a star in this sign called the perverse. So he is the perverse one. It's in the uplifted tail. I don't think you can see it, but it's right down there in the uplifted tail. All right? Notice that. <clears throat> can you see that tail right there, that scorpion? It's about to strike the foot of that one just above it. Can you see the foot of that constellation above it? Okay, we'll, we'll tell you about that in just a minute. But anyway, he is the perverse one. We talk about Satan. This is a picture of Satan. He is the perverse one. Proverbs chapter 4 talks about people who have perverse lips. They have a perverse tongue. And so, again, that is a, a mark of demonic control. Also, the Arab word for that it means the cleaving as in conflict with the enemy. The root word, Psalm 22, 16, let's go there, is dogs. For this star, okay? Psalm 22, 16. Amen. For dogs have compassed me, said the Lord. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. There we go. It speaks of enclosing. That's what Zion means. It needs to literally be enclosed or to be surrounded or to be encompassed. And so the Lord says while he's hanging on that cross, he says, dogs have compassed me. Amen? He also tells us right there, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They look, I mean, they're just gazing. You know, they're like those people that Ezekiel talked about. The, the looks that they had, they're, they're like scorpions, and their gaze was like scorpions when they looked upon Jesus. So he says they're surrounding him, compassing him. Uh, amen. They pierce my hand, my feet. I may tell on my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. So the root word for that star in the tail right there is dog. The Hebrew, the root of that star means dog, okay? Verse 21, save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horn. Oh.